Not so long ago, when there were only a few channels to speak of, anyone who appeared on screen became a household name by default. A single memorable performance could see you starified overnight. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems back then we looked up to famous people. They seemed cleverer than us, funnier than us. They made charming, flickering companions, but then something changed. Today we hate the famous so much, shows like I'm a Celebrity gleefully torture them. That's it, Spoonbender. Eat those worms. Modern fame is bullshit. With so many channels pumping out so many faces, any value it's had has completely gone. I think they're desperate. Really not very bright. Scum, basically. Yeah. So given how rubbish fame is, how come the X Factor queue looks like Kate Thornton's handing out free diamonds and blowjobs at the other end of it? Why are these people bothering? In a bid to find out, we put out adverts offering members of the public the chance to win 40 seconds of airtime on this show. We didn't specify any particular criteria for their act. All they really needed was a desire to appear on TV. Here's what happened. We received hundreds of responses, then spent a day auditioning some of them. Each contestant had prepared their own 40-second routine, but before they started performing, we wanted to know what they expected to get out of TV exposure. Some wanted recognition. My goal is to be respected for, for what I do. Some craved a luxury lifestyle. Living abroad, possibly somewhere that's up and coming, like a tourist destination, such as Dubai, somewhere like that. And some had things they just wanted to promote. Teaching individuals to creatively heal. And there's even a hysterical stage play to go with all of this. Well, whatever their individual reasons, they all seemed convinced that they wanted stardom. But did they really think that fame does anyone any good? Can you think of any famous people who strike you as being happy? <laughs> Very few. Not genuinely, no. Despite this, their appetite for fame's undiminished. Um, for instance, this guy wants to become famous for being Britain's cleanest man. I'm Britain's cleanest male. I'm Graham. I'm a cleanaholic. I've got a 51-inch plasma television screen that I clean every day, and it looks absolutely immaculate. And in the current climate, well, phew, why the hell shouldn't he? Christ, at least cleaning's a genuine skill. Okay, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. Speaking of genuine skill, several of our contestants definitely displayed that. Mind you, there's no denying some of the acts possessed, well, perhaps more niche appeal than anything else. Also, I am fashion designers of medieval clothes. And what is it that you're going to do for us today? Oh, well, actually, um, I was thinking to, to say one joke. Yeah, is the NASA sent to... To, to the moon is uh, Tony Blair in one monkey. And uh, one day we reached the moon and uh, the NASA tried to call to, 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 to people that's on the moon and say to the monkey, monkey, so what's happening in the moon? Uh, and the monkey said, oh, the thing that's happening in the moon by computer. When they asked to, to Tony Blair, Tony Blair said, yes, I know, I know, it's, I'm here just to give food and drink to the monkey. <laughs> yeah, well, it's easy to mock, but at least he's trying, not just sitting around stuffing his face. Besides, English isn't even his first language. I couldn't tell a joke in Portuguese. Here's the proof. A few days after our audition, I decided to catch up with Carlos, because that's his name, and try and make him laugh in his native language. <coughs> doita, doita. Oi ponso, oi so um par de cortinas. Puxe vocho junto. What do you think? I think you are not so. And you know what? I think he's got a point. Because any TV talent show that invites members of the public to perform like this is inherently unfair. For starters, OK, I'm a frog-faced, bewildered, 30-something media tit. Therefore, I am totally unqualified to judge anybody. With the lights on, the audition room soon becomes swelteringly hot and claustrophobic. You've got no real chance to rehearse, no costume or makeup department to assist you. The sound levels are absolutely unforgiving, and the backdrop's a poxy bit of rag and a poster. It's a surefire way to put anyone off their stride. Yo, I can't stop now. It's the industry now, and I'm on the stage. I'm gonna be... Oh, you think I'm crap, don't you? It's an abusive, one-sided relationship weighted against the public, in which all the power rests with the TV show, which in this case is us. So, what have I learned? 
Well, it seems to me the TV wannabes are stuck slap bang in the middle of a great big barn dance of arseholes. In one corner you've got TV itself, chewing them up using them as cheap cannon fodder. In the other you've got the general public that seems to love to cackle at their broken dreams. And then you've got people like me going, hey, what's it all about, BBC4? Who's the biggest arsehole in the room, I ask you? Like an arsehole. Awful. Just absolutely awful. You've made a fool of yourself, you've wasted my time. People like you make me actually physically sick. When you try your best but you don't succeed. Fuck off. Anyway, uh, at least our auditionees didn't waste their time. The prize is genuine. And we have a winner. The 40 seconds of fame goes to... <coughs> Kevin Validen, whose act is... Well, see for yourself. I'm damn excited. I want to show you what I can do. With some pants and some pipes and a tap. My first piece will be Pan Pipe Dreams by me. I'm going to tap dance. Use my pants. Here we go. Pan pipes! Pan and pipes! Pan pipes! Pan and pipes! Pan pipe dreams! It's the bee's knees! What a breeze! Cook it with chicken and peas! Give it to your knees without cheese! Please! Please. Yeah! And to end it now, I'm gonna end it with a big bang. Okay? Here we go. Right. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. On There's next there, week's show, sex. We'll start here. I think it's always important to get a look on the girl's face when we start, just so we can identify with the delightful young creature who's before us. That seems like two spoons laying in the drawer. Which is why we call it spoons. Right. Yes. So even if I bring the camera to there, you can still see Where it. Where do people want to look at that? Um, masturbatory purposes, I fear. Primarily.